Introduction to slope, finding slope from a graph. Slope is the incline or steepness of a line. Lines that appear to go uphill from left to right have a positive slope. Downhill from left to right have a negative slope. Horizontal lines have a slope of zero and vertical lines are undefined. And in order to give an exact slope, a numeric slope, slope is our rise over our run or our change in our y over our change in our x. Our change in y is our vertical change, and our change in x is our horizontal change. When we say rise over run, all we really mean is to get from one point to another point on our line, what is the ratio of how much we rise, or how many boxes we go up or down, to compare to how much we run, or move from left to right. In this case, to get from the left point to the right point, we went up four boxes, and we went to the right three boxes, or three units. That means that our slope is four over three. We can double check that it's a positive slope because we already know that if we move up from left to right, it's positive. Now let's do the examples in your foldable. Open up your notebook. And if you're just watching this for extra review, then just follow along or take notes on separate paper. We're in the tab that says, I can find slope from a graph. Our steps for finding slope from a graph are to identify two points on the line that you can easily read, count our rise over run, and then simplify the ratio. We always want to double check that if it's positive or if it's negative, we have the correct sign. The first thing I need to do is to identify some points that are directly lined up on the corners. For example, I see one right here, I see one right here, I see one right here. Sometimes it's hard to tell if something is directly lined up, so you want to make sure that the pattern continues. What I mean by that is it almost looks like the point 1, 1 is directly covered by my line. However, if I were to follow the pattern that I'm seeing, I go up 2 over 3, up 2 over 3. If I had marked that dot, the pattern wouldn't continue so that I know that it is not a correct dot. Now we want to choose any two points on the line that we can easily read. So I'm going to choose this one and this one. And I'm going to count my rise over my run. My rise is how much I move up or down, and my run is how much I move left or right. So if I start at the left green dot, I need to move up two boxes in order to get on the same line as my green dot. Then I need to move to the right three boxes in order to be on the same line as my point and return to my line. When I'm talking about my line, I'm talking about this black line right here. So I went up one, two, so my rise was two, and I could fill that in over here. And then I moved over one, two, three. So I'll fill in a three for my run. That means that my slope is two-thirds. I can't simplify that, so I leave it just as it is. If I had gone down instead of up, we would know that it was a negative slope, because as we move up the number line, we're moving in the positive direction, and as we move down the number line, we're moving in the negative direction. But we can also check right at the start whether this should be positive or negative. And I would even recommend writing even a plus sign or a minus sign right at the beginning so you can double check yourself. What this slope means is that as x increases by 3, y increases by 2. So remember that the denominator tells us the change in x and that the numerator tells us the change in y. That symbol means change in. It said delta. So we have as x increases by 3, y increases by 2. Let's look at another. First thing we do is we mark the points that the line goes directly through. We want to make sure that our pattern continues, and I see that it does. So I'll use this point and this point. And we notice that as I move from this point on the left to the point on the right, I go down 1, 2, 3. This means that my rise 
was negative 3 because I went down. Now to get back to my purple line, I need to go to the right 2. So my run is 2. This means that my slope, or my rise over run, is negative 3 over 2. I double check my type, and my type here is a negative slope because it's going downhill as we go from left to right. Remember, we're going in this direction. Here's my person. So I have a negative slope, and my slope matches that. So as x increases by 2, my denominator, y decreases by 3. We don't ever decrease by a negative here. The word decrease covers the negative. Now what if somebody else had done the same problem, but they had chosen to use this point here and the one way down here? No matter what two points we choose on the line, we should still get the same slope. So let's look at that now. If I chose to use these two points that I marked in red, then my rise would be negative 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, because I went down 6 boxes, and my run would be 1, 2, 3, 4. So my slope is negative 6 over 4, which simplifies to negative 3 over 2. It doesn't matter which two points you pick. It will still be in the same ratio, so it will still give you the same slope. So to recap, we always want to check our sign of our slope. Then we pick two points on the line that are easy to read that go directly through our line and through across on the coordinate plane. We count our rise over run. And I would start with the point on the left, because then we can see if we go down, it's negative. If we go up, it's positive, And it's a second check for ourselves. We want to simplify our slope. And the way we describe it is always as x increases, because we're moving from left to right. So as x increases by whatever our denominator is, or our run, y either increases or decreases, depending on the sign, by whatever our rise is. A final thing to be careful of is the scale. So what I mean by that is that even though this line looks like it, it goes up one box and over one box, which would be a slope of 1, we notice our scale has changed. So every box here on our x-axis is going up by 5. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. And every box on our y-axis is going up 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. We want to get comfortable with a scale of 1 first, but it's important to make sure that we always double check our scales as well. If you want to pause the video and try this one, you can. Pause it now. The answer to the slope here is 2 fifths. It's a positive slope, and as x increases by 5, y increases by 2. If you had trouble with this one, don't worry about it. We'll work on these more tomorrow.